One of my favorite scenes in Haikyuu is a bit of an overlooked one that takes place during episode 16 of season 1. During the early stages of the Interhigh, we witness an integrated montage of the Karasuno boys and girls playing in their matches, each experiencing varying levels of success. But what is unique about this is that the narrative's perspective is solely focused on the teams that are losing. Chiefly, Michimiya from the Karasuno girls team and Ikejiri of Tokonami High, the Karasuno boys' opponents. Taking away the perspective from the protagonists for this sequence and focusing on the underdogs, and ultimately the defeated, turns this into what I consider an encapsulation of one of Haikyuu's main themes. A proper exploration of how painful loss is for the defeated, and the show's first real way of using perspective to strengthen the story. But the key here that puts the cherry on top of the scene, shifts their perspective back, and brings it all together is a telling look from Hinata as Ikejiri walks away, witnessing the desperate sadness of one of the defeated. This look here is a curious one, an innocent one, and most of all, one that shows Hinata his worst nightmare. Here it is clear that Hinata will do anything to avoid this sad fate, and this element is why the theme I describe here has two sides to it. The agony you feel when that which you love is ripped away from you, and the hunger and desire you feel to continue playing that spurs you on towards victory. It's all about a deep yearning and need to be on the court. It's a line that is repeated numerous times throughout the series. If we keep winning and don't get eliminated, we can play more volleyball. This in itself is the main reward for these players. The attraction of winning volleyball games is to play more of it, simply because they love it and it's their passion. For players like Hinata, Kagiyama, and most of Katasuno, it is as much of a factor in their desire for victory as the need to win, or a want to celebrate with teammates. Honestly, it's probably even more of a factor. These characters are bona fide volleyball idiots. The main theme here is not mankind's innate thirst for victory, but his sheer desire to pursue his passions and constantly reach that high. Here, winning is not super valuable just for winning's sake, but more importantly, victory essentially translates to, I get to play more volleyball. And this is a tiny distinction, but it is also one that makes a ton of difference and recontextualizes the series. Losing is deeply frustrating, but it wouldn't be nearly as much so if it didn't mean that you had to stop playing. Everyone wants to be on the court. It's scary but thrilling, there's anxiety and nerves, but there's nothing quite like the rapid beating of your heart and that familiar rush of adrenaline to make you feel alive. Skishima learns to develop this love for the court, the bench players fight to find a place on it. The veterans learn to savor this feeling in what could be their last matches in high school and the first years blazed through, not really worried about anything except the idea of not being able to have some fun. Again, winning means more volleyball, so why the hell wouldn't these guys push themselves to hell and back when the end result means so much to them? In stories, I tend to look towards the main protagonist to see how effectively they shoulder the narrative and help to communicate the main themes and strengths of the work. And no doubt Haikyuu's writer, Haruichi Furudate, holds a similar philosophy, because this pure need I describe is most exemplified through Hinata, who is the ideal type of character for a story trying to fill every fiber of its inner machinations with this specific idea. His earnest journey to defy the unfair realities of his genetics to play on a grand stage is enticing in and of itself just because of how endearing he is and how clear he makes it that he wholeheartedly loves this sport. 
But I think the most indicative presentation of this aforementioned need is in an element that has a little bit of a different complexion than the sentiment-heavy, pathos-driven style of the story. As I said, this hunger and necessity to play is described in two ways. On one side, we have the pain of being defeated, and on the other, we have, well, we have what Hinata shows us. Every so often, Katasuno's number 10 gets a tiny little look in his eyes, a bit of a crazed stare. This isn't the gaze of a psychopath or anything, but it's a glimpse into the deepest foundations of Hinata's soul. Mankind is at its most basic, its most primitive, and its most scary when it comes to fundamental human needs. Toss a man on a remote island, and he'll become a cutthroat hunter to survive, for example. This instinctual animalism is buried inside each of us. The depth, meaning how close it is to the surface level of our personality, depends from person to person, but it's there in everyone. Now, what's so incredible about Hinata is that this crazed animalism simply rears itself whenever the prospect of playing more volleyball comes up. In the first episode, when he simply couldn't see the logic in giving up and just looked for ways to continue to play, when he made the declaration to Ushijima that he would defeat him at nationals and became filled with an indescribable excitement at the sheer prospect of it. When he communicated his simple yearning for victory to Yachi, questioning whether he needed a reason to want to keep winning, as if it was nearly ridiculous. When he was so hungry for the ball that for a moment he forgot about all who were around him and tried to overpower Asahi. It's an inherent, almost innocent sort of defiance that he applies to every situation as he struggles to do more and more of the thing he loves. He lives and breathes volleyball, and he is characterized by this consistent and insatiable hunger. Kagiyama is definitely possessed by the same spirit as well, and the duo are adorably oblivious at how one-track their minds are due to how they conflate winning with being able to play more. But as funny as it is, it speaks of the profundity of that idea and how much Haikyuu imbues the story with its essence. For them, it has become a survival instinct, and those key looks I mentioned in particular are a glimpse into the most carnal and base aspect of that instinct. It's an element of Hinata that makes him an extremely dynamic and flexible protagonist. It's a double-edged sword of sorts. It represents innocence due to how pure and one-minded it is, but it also hints at a darkness, as the series has made it quite clear that Hinata can get scarily tunnel-visioned at times. And both of these sides key us in to the idea that I'm talking about here. Hinata isn't very complex, but aside from the nuances of his endearing personality, he is a pristine vehicle for Haikyuu's exploration of the necessity of partaking in your passion. The want to spend your time doing what you love most, no matter what obstacles stand in your way. It's a common, tangible thread that links the vast majority of characters in the series, a sort of innate mutual understanding between all of the players, friend or adversary, that gives the story an extra layer of sentiment and emotion. Everyone in Haikyuu uses volleyball as a superior replacement for the lives they live. They all play it to feel good, to feel more worthwhile than they usually do, to have fun. Winning means being able to seek these higher planes even more, and losing means an abrupt drop back to Earth. More so in this story than any other sports anime I've seen, loss results in a stifling of passion, a return to the ordinary, a clipping of the wings. And no words are needed between players. Everyone understands just how painful this is, which provides the emotional establishment of the stakes. There really are no straight-up villains in Haikyuu. The closest thing to one really just uses volleyball as a way to feel good and satisfy his power lust, but in the end, everyone has a decent idea of what is at stake for everyone else. 
these players understand each other, and due to this, they want to win even more for their teammates, and can relate to the pain of a fallen opponent. And this is what provides the story with such a sense of perspective and empathy, and why every loss seems to hit hard, even if it's a loss for a team you were rooting against. It's all linked by this theme, because being cut off from what you love is tragic in any context. Haikyuu understands, more than any work I've ever seen, how someone can yearn and hunger for their passion, how they can be possessed by the need to remain on the summit of human experience. And it is something that digs deeper into the essence of human nature than one would expect through this. It says that while our thirst for victory for victory's sake is very much an element in sport, so too is a simple desire to do the things we love for the people we love. We want to avoid pain, and conversely, we seek pleasure and fulfillment. Everyone does. That's essentially what this all comes down to, and that's what Haikyuu has been touting from episode and chapter 1. Many thanks for watching. それより影山よ。もう一セット。やれるぞ。お。